it is a great day. It's the day I get to actually start in a more serious way mobilizing and tearing the world apart and getting ready to build a shop for Ben and Amanda and their family. First thing I've got to pull this fence down. We did a little exploratory digging the other day trying to find the sprinkler pipes. We've got an electrical line and another water line to uncover and all that'll happen. But the first thing is, got to back my trailer in here, tear the boards off this fence and rip the posts right out of the ground. Well, it's time to really start in on the Brewster's shop. We've got the little fence, you know, the fence boards torn down. We've salvaged what we could salvage. We've thrown away what had to go. So this morning, we're going to be kind of carefully easing into uncovering some utilities that are right here. This was an RV parking space that it was put in apparently when the house was built, you know, 20 years ago or whenever it was built. There's a couple pieces of good news. The first being, that there's a lot of base, a lot of big rock underneath the grade here on this parking space, which means I don't have to do a great deal of site prep before we just build up and get ready to pour the slab. The second is we've uncovered most of the sprinkler lines. We only broke one and it doesn't matter anyway because the whole sprinkler system is going to be reconfigured in the backyard. What remains is to discover a sewer line, an electrical line, and the main water line feed so that we know how to sort of attach what we're going to put out here in this shop and garage which is coming. So these are the lines that we uncovered oh two or three days ago before the rain just cut loose and we had Mother's Day weekend and right over here is a little pad that has the utilities that were in place for the RV parking. We have the sewer um, inlet, we have a, a potable water, I assume that's a potable water hydrant, and we have a 120 volt actually it looks like it's 240, should be 240, but it didn't test at that. So anyhow, we've got to discover how these things route back to the house, take out this piece of sidewalk over here in order to tie it in with what's going to happen around the shop and find a new way in for a better electrical feed, more dependable water, and make sure that the sewer line is going to work to drain what goes on out here. So I'm going to hopefully be able to operate that thing smoothly enough to not make a problem worse. So we're gonna have a good time this morning tearing things up as much as we need to and not one bit more, I hope. I would like to preserve this. So I'm just cutting into this pad, hoping there's no rebar in it, break it up into as small a chunks as I can so I can pull it out with the excavator and kind of uncover these pipes more or less intact so I can sort of trace their course back to the house. I probably should just thrash it and not worry about preserving anything and then just intercept the line over there at a new point, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not yet such an excavator operator that I can be surgical about this, so I'm going to be surgical with the hand tools and then just clean up the mess with the machine. So I'm really no good at all at underground forensics. We have sort of some extra water lines. We haven't really uncovered where the conduit goes or comes from. The sewer line continues to go deeper, so we're gonna follow that carefully and see what happens. So, you know, it's like, 
This is a classic example of car starfish construction, and that is you don't know where you're at, you don't know where you're going, but you're still moving. And sometimes that's the best we got. We've got electrical conduit shaping up right here, water pipes above that that you would expect. And then we've just got into a little bit of extra of gravel here, which is probably the way they backfilled around this sewer line. So I broke the sounding wire right off the bat, but here it is again, it looks like. Finding things? So I think we're getting close. We're gonna do a little bit of handwork here so that we don't, you know, do any more damage than we have to. And I think we're just about to know what we have to tie into when we start putting up the batter boards and actually siding the building on this little spot. So this is known as a, a hot saw or a quickie saw. And it's just an amazing tool for a lot of things, but it's nowhere any more amazing than the fact that you can cut through concrete, you know, in the same way that a hacksaw will cut through steel, and that's counterintuitive because you think, how would a hand-powered saw cut through steel? A chainsaw configuration with a circular blade where the edge of it has little bitty industrial diamond chunks glued with some sort of a glue in, in a matrix that holds it at the edge of the saw. So the edge of the saw is wider than the body of the saw, so there's clearance. The very edge also has the diamond pieces on it, so just the friction, the abrasion of the diamond swirling at about 10,000 feet per minute rim speed, coming in contract, contact with the concrete, wears it away, really in quite a hurry. And so it is very helpful to be able to to cut concrete into smaller pieces so you don't have to break the full thickness of the concrete all over the place all the time. We'll see how that works. I hope that there's not a big thickened edge here with rebar in it because that would vastly complicate our day. But I'm gonna pull this piece of this old dog run out of here, undoubtedly demolish the drain that's cast in and get this out of the way so we can come back with some new flat work. Well, this has gone way better, I guess, than it could have, and frankly, way better than I thought it would. I didn't hurt the siding, no scars on the stem wall, but we're right down to the last little segment here, and there's two, three, actually, conduits coming up out of this little sidewalk apron. They're all dead. That is, the high-voltage stuff is shut off. There's a 30-amp circuit that went out for the RV parking, and really heavy wire. I don't really understand that exactly. There was a 120, 110, 120 circuit that is shut off. I just pulled on it until I saw sparks because there's a there's a modern panel in there and sure enough the breaker had kicked. But coming out of that LB right over here is the low voltage stuff for the sprinkler that I would like to leave if not intact then certainly long enough to get a hold of when we re reconstruct this uh, sprinkler system. I can't seem to make it come back. I'm gonna uncover some of the dirt back here, see if that'll come back a little, and then I'm just gonna tug on this and see if that little strip will remain right there. If it does, I'll put a couple more cross cuts and probably just use a sledgehammer and try to break it away, at least from this one and from the downspout, the gutter over there on the end that I would really rather not have to repair. Well, this was a great deal of monkey motion, right? Um, but I think it was worth it because this LB, I guess that's an LB, has a low voltage to feed the sprinkler boxes in the backyard. So that's intact, we didn't break that off. This can be broken off because this line is going to be rerouted and I might be able to use that wire to pull back through. I don't know, I guess I doubt that. We didn't hurt the gutter, the inlet into the drain for the gutter system. That just gets to be out of control. I mean, if that's down there a foot or two and you tear that out and it fills up with dirt, it's just, it's so ugly. So anyway, I think that this is gonna work out about right. I'm gonna load that concrete. I think there's two yards, that's about a five inch slab. So yeah, I think there's a couple yards of concrete. We're gonna load that in the trailer, take it over to the reclamation site, drop it off. And we're just about ready to set batter boards and string lines and paint and see what we need to do to really get the excavation down to where it belongs. Well, I didn't film every moment of what's gone on here because a lot of it was in the pouring rain. We've had just a wet, 
wet spring, which we have needed. But I got some concrete torn out and I've got some grade reestablished to a certain point. And that point is today. We have to actually site the building on the lot. We have the requirements of the uh, county building department for setback from property lines, but now we're going to establish whether we want it um, parallel to the property line or square to the house or centered on the driveway, just sort of get the best compromise between appearance and utility that we can get. Um, not forgetting for a moment that buildability and expense of excavation and how to get up, how to access the sides of the work, all that's part of the calculation, but mostly it's one, how do you want it to work? And two, how do you want it to look? So I'm going over this with the world's best son-in-law. We're gonna put some strings up and get some ideas and then put some paint marks on the ground and see what happens next. So we're just doing some rough building situation. I hesitate to even call it layout. It's just kind of a close counts moment. But this stake is too short. It's down in this soft fill. It hasn't been compacted. We got a muddy mess here and I need it to be up. But since I'm using square stakes, this is no challenge at all. I take another square stake and I run it down here till it makes contact. And I find a hole that's not been blocked by concrete. And I tap it down until I can nail my two concrete stakes together. And then, hopefully, there'll be another one lining up right there. Oh, there is, almost. Try that with a round stake. Well, we've got it situated. We, I think, got all the compromises that we need to make between the comfort and convenience and drivability of bringing an RV or somebody wanting to bring a big truck into the shop, you know, the location of the door, the orientation. We got very close to parallel to the side yard and gave up on having it square to the house. So let me just walk you around sort of what it looks like right now before we go to the next excavation effort. These yellow lines are just for for digging, right? So that's a building corner over here adjacent to the garage. Got a six foot return wall. And it's a brace panel wall. It'll be strong and hold downs on each end. And then a 14 foot opening, which goes over to about here, which puts the access centered well enough on the driveway to hit it easily. There's another six foot brace panel wall right here. It'll have shear nailing and hold downs on each end. And we had to shift it over up onto this bank a little bit. If you can see the yellow line on the yellow green wild strawberries. Got a lot of rock and cut to make there, which will be a little bit of a problem because we want to save those rocks if we can. That's six inch basalt with some bigger pieces that's pretty good for landscaping. So we got to cut that back far enough in here to have working room and hopefully not mess up those, I guess those are camellia bushes, whatever they are. Don't want to kill those. Got some pompous grass there, which could go or stay. So this material in here, all these rocks need to be salvaged if possible. This becomes the corner. That's where we painted it like eight months ago when we first started talking about this. I was hoping we could sort of move it out, but we can't. So that's the corner on the back. We have, instead of the 10 feet required on the setback, we have about 11. This is a clean out in um, a French drain, which drains water from the back of all the properties uphill. We'll drain, it is carrying surface water right now and it will carry more when this is done. Here's the back line, roughly. This extruded curb is all gonna go away. There are some of the segments, they've gotta go to the dump. And then over here is where I uncovered and had to sort of battle the utility hookups for the RV parking that was here. They were a disappointment. The electricity's not enough. I do not think, I have yet to verify, but I don't think that four inch 
inlet into the sewer was actually into the sewer. I think somebody just ran a little dry well over into the yard for gray water out of an RB. I don't, I don't think I can use that for the septic on this shop bathroom. This all needs to be backfilled with some good sized structural material and packed in hard because of the edge of the building is right there on that nasty cut. Now on the plus side of the ledger, this pad out in here, if you can see it, has got these six inch bones underneath. There's some base underneath this pad, which is good. So I'm gonna duplicate that over here on the exterior bearing condition. This has all gotta be healed up, pipes pulled out. The water line, which comes in from the side of the house, terminates right here at a valve, which was buried. We uncovered that. That valve right there still operates. So we're gonna move that back and put it in a little vault over here in a new sidewalk apron approach. There'll be a sidewalk around there and it'll all be tied in to the side driveway on the house. So the situation is understood. I've got to raise the grade out here about eight inches. We will get a double drum roller in here that Brian Reynolds is letting me use and we will hammer this down and get this thing ready to go, hopefully to coincide with sunny weather, which is supposed to be here in about a week. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.